This didn't just come from me. This didn't just come from some random health practitioner. This is set in stone by modern science, much to my surprise prior to making this video. Helminth therapy is a real thing. Half the world has a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii inside of them. 11% of the US population has it, and 64.2% of the Ethiopian population has it. And guess what? Half the world's population is completely symptom free. They're not getting sick from this parasite. Despite being more contaminated and polluted and not having the same access to things that we have in the West, these third world countries have far less allergies and tolerances, skin problems and digestive issues than we have in the West. In a few minutes you might realize that one of the reasons why this is is because of parasites, that parasites might be a natural part of the human digestive system and that Toxoplasma gondii is a natural part of any human. When I was young and in school, one of my teachers said something very interesting. They said that when you put pigs in a sterile environment, they get sick. And then when you put them in a dirty environment, where they're eating their own shit, and they're in the mud, and they're doing all of these things that humans deem disgusting, they're very healthy. This story comes from Dr. Joel Weinstock and his pigs. You see, there were these pigs that they were performing scientific experiments on. And so these pigs were in a sterile environment and what they noticed was that these pigs were very sick. They got very sick. They weren't healthy. They weren't behaving like normal pigs. So what Dr. Joel Weinstock did is he gave them trichinosis. Dr. Weinstock gave them trichurisuis, a type of whipworm, aka a parasite. And these pigs became healthy again. And what you might say is, but that's a pig. Well, he did the same thing with humans, but we'll get to that later. One of my viewers was slaughtering chickens, and he said that he accidentally nicked the intestines and he saw a bunch of parasites come out. And because I was eating raw chicken, he said that I could never eat raw chicken after seeing that. And so I told him, were these chickens unhealthy? Did they have some sickness? Were they eating or were they not eating? How did their poop look like? I said, consider that these parasites within the chicken are actually helpful, that they're a natural part of the chicken's digestive system. And then he said, oh, I understand. From the research I've done, it is clear that when you look at parasites within an animal, if the animal is behaving in a normal manner, then obviously the parasite is a natural part of the animal's digestive system. Otherwise, parasites wouldn't exist in so many animals. It's not just pigs that get sick in a sterile environment. It's chickens too, and it's humans too. Any animal gets sick in a sterile environment. Why? Because they're not supposed to be in a sterile environment. For the entire history of any animal on Earth, including humans, we've never been in a sterile environment. And so putting us in a sterile environment is not putting us in the habitat we're supposed to be in. We're supposed to be exposed to parasites and bacteria and sunlight and dirt. We're supposed to be exposed to all of these things. If you suddenly remove these things, then you're going to be removing important components of our environment that are related to how our bodies function. Think about it with me. We put back parasites into pigs and they suddenly become healthy. We look at indigenous people and people living in nature and they're obviously more healthy than people in modern society. And we look at the sterile environment that humans are in right now in modern society and we see that the modern human beings are very sick. We've never been more sick, and we've never been more sterile. And so what happens if we suddenly reintroduce parasites into humans? Let's not just do that with pigs, let's do that with humans. Thankfully, Dr. Joel Weinstock got permission to do the same thing with humans. So he got 29 people with Crohn's disease, and this is a real study, he got 29 people with Crohn's disease, and he gave them Trichurus suis. He takes these people with Crohn's disease and every three weeks he gives them Trichurus suis for 24 weeks. After these 24 weeks, 21 people with severe Crohn's disease remitted. They're completely healthy now. They don't have Crohn's disease anymore. And they did nothing else. They just gave them parasites. And 23 out of 29 subjects experienced very, very good results. So, two extra people didn't get rid of Crohn's disease, but they still feel much better now. You know what the best part about this is? 
you're taking the people with the most compromised digestive systems that theoretically speaking parasites could just run through there's no protection there everything is damaged and that's why they have Crohn's disease that's what Crohn's disease is they're giving them parasites and you know what they write in the study no adverse effects were observed none of these 29 subjects experienced any side effects whatsoever and so if you compare that to the pills you find at your local pharmacy mathematically speaking they have an infinite amount more side effects than Trichuris suis. If you're open-minded enough, this is a mouse meta-analysis where they found that when you put parasites into mice with IBD, they get better. That's the conclusion of this study, that parasite treatment with mice that have IBD is effective. You might say, that's a mouse. Well, the thing is, the animal cells inside of you and the animal cells inside of a mouse are almost identical. So we're talking about the same things being affected. The entire digestive system, although it is very different, it functions in the same way. The structural components are the same. The mouse also has a gut microbiome, as an example. It has an esophagus, it has a mouth, it has saliva, it has a stomach, it has intestines. But it doesn't make sense. Ever since we were young, we've always been taught that parasites are dangerous. So how come I'm telling you that they're a natural part of the human and animal digestive system? If you look at bacteria, you'll understand why it's not a very good idea for parasites to kill their host. With bacteria, they're there because we feed them and we want them because they help us digest food. They eat food and shit it out. That's what the gut microbiome does. And if you don't understand this, watch this video. I made an entire video about bacteria. You can get a better explanation of that over there if you didn't understand it over here. Parasites do the exact same thing. Now think about it. If bacteria killed you, there wouldn't be a host feeding them. Whenever you eat, you keep your bacteria alive. If you didn't eat, if the bacteria killed you and you stopped eating, they'd start eating you, but eventually there would be no you left. So bacteria have a much easier time surviving if they don't kill their host, if they work with the host. Now, why would it be any different for parasites? Parasites are just another organism that you're taking care of and they're taking care of you It's much more likely that there are parasites that don't kill their host than parasites that kill their host Why because imagine you're a parasite if you kill your host you're killing the one that's feeding you And so the parasites that didn't kill the host they got to survive far easier far longer than the ones that killed their host they killed the host and then they had to wait until some other animal would eat the corpse of the dead animal with the parasites in them and hopefully this parasite had laid eggs by that point to administer the parasite into the next host. Without bacteria you die, they're that important and science acknowledges that. It acknowledges that for every one human gene we have, we have 200 bacterial genes. Just like there are good bacteria, there are mutant antibiotic resistant bacteria that would probably cause harm to humans because they've been exposed to things that no organism should be exposed to. In the same way, there are probably parasites that are very dangerous and there are probably many, many parasites that are very beneficial to their host, to you. Now you might not believe me, you might still be scared of parasites. Let me tell you something. There's something called helminthic therapy, which is therapy, medical therapy using parasites. This is not, you know, something coming from some random health practitioner. This is not something just coming from me. This is a scientific field. There have been many studies that do this successfully. Before I read this, practically speaking, a helminth is the same as a parasite. While the latter four species may be considered to be mutualists, providing benefit to their host without causing long-term harm, there are other helminth species that have demonstrated therapeutic effects, but which also have a potential to cause less desirable or even harmful effects, and therefore do not share the ideal characteristics for a therapeutic helminth. Now what does this mean? This means that scientifically, there are parasites which are very beneficial, which means that parasites should be a part of our digestive system. If there are beneficial parasites to human beings, 
then they should be in your digestive system and they probably have been in our digestive system when we have lived in a proper manner while it is recognized that there is probably a genetic disposition in certain individuals for the development of autoimmune diseases the rate of increase in incidence of autoimmune diseases is not a result of genetic changes in humans the increased rate of autoimmune related diseases in the industrialized world is occurring in too short a time to be explained in this way there is evidence that one of the primary reasons for the increase in autoimmune diseases in industrialized nations is the significant change in environmental factors over the last century. It is posited that the absence of exposure to certain parasites, bacteria, and viruses is playing a significant role in the development of autoimmune diseases in the more sanitized and industrialized Western nations, i.e. modern society. Now listen to this. Similarly, Hamenolopis nana, Trichuris trichura, Ascaris lumbricodes, Stringyloides stercoralis, Enterobius vermicularis, and Trichuris suis ova have all been found to lower the number of symptom exacerbations, reduce the number of symptom relapses, and decrease the number of new or enlarging brain lesions in patients with multiple sclerosis at doses ranging from 1,180 to 9,340 eggs per gram. So parasites give people with multiple sclerosis less brain lesions. Now I've clearly stated in this video that I believe that parasites are a natural part of the human microbiome, but I'm not the only one saying that. The microbiome depletion hypothesis posits that the absence of an entire class of organisms from the human inner ecology, listen closely, the absence of an entire class of organisms from the human inner ecology is a profound evolutionary mismatch that destabilizes the immune system resulting in disease. The microbiome is depleted. The way to correct the dysregulation is to reconstitute or replenish keystone species in healthy individuals prior to the development of human diseases of modern living. And now just to hammer in the point, because I really want you to understand this. Helminth infection has emerged as one possible explanation for the low incidence of autoimmune diseases and allergies in less developed countries, while reduced infection rates have been linked with significant and sustained increase in autoimmune diseases seen in industrialized countries. This didn't just come from me. This didn't just come from some random health practitioner. This is set in stone by modern science, much to my surprise prior to making this video. Helminth therapy is a real thing, and the results that real scientists have produced in human beings are phenomenal. If you still believe that you need to do parasite cleansing, that you need to do these protocols that get rid of parasites in your digestive system, I urge you to reconsider. I urge you to reconsider that it is not parasites that you need to get rid of, it is actually pollution that you need to get rid of. That this organism that is alive is something that helps you, that is symbiotic, that has a relationship with you. You feed them and they feed you. While pollution just destroys life. That was the science side of things. However, there is one man who can explain all of this much more easily. You see, in the 90s, this man didn't just make the connection between health and bacteria. He made it with everything. This man is called... Agenis van der Planets. Agenis understood this from day one. He understood that the human microbiome can't be messed with, otherwise you'll get health problems. He didn't just recognize that bacteria are healthy, he made the same connection with helminths, with parasites. He did it with fungi, and he also did it with viruses. Now this is how he explained it. What do bacteria do in your digestive system? Obviously, they eat the food that you eat. That's how they digest the food. That's why they're so important for digestion. Look, in your small intestine and your stomach and your upper digestive tract, a lot of it is chemical. You've got digestive enzymes, you've got hydrochloric acid, you've got pancreatic juice and this and that. When you get to the large intestine where most of the bacteria are, you've got bacterial digestion. You don't have a lot of chemical digestion. You've got no secretions, no enzymes over there. You've just got bacteria. And the bacteria, the way they live down there is they eat the food. The way you digest stuff in the large intestine is the bacteria eat up the food and obviously they shit it out. And what they shit out is what you absorb because when the bacteria eat the stuff, 
that is how you get the nutrients that is how you break down the food so that you can get the stuff that you can absorb and logically speaking nothing else makes sense nothing except this way of thinking about it makes sense with parasites you've got the same thing happening according to audience one of the planets you've got the parasites eating up the food and shitting it out and what this does is you've got less reliance on chemical digestion less reliance on enzymes less reliance on secretions these secretions take up a lot of nutrients to create hydrochloric acid you need to use up a lot of nutrients to create pancreatic juice it takes up a lot of nutrients so when the parasites are there and they're breaking up all the food you're using far less energy because you don't have to rely on enzymes you don't have to rely on any secretions you don't have to rely as much on very good hydrochloric acid production you can digest stuff much more efficiently and this is something that Arginus von der Planets talks about he talks about how when he managed to introduce parasites to his digestive tract that's the first time in his life that he wasn't constipated that's the first time he was able to have bowel movements without it hurting his butthole and if you're not convinced about this think about recursus how was it able to cure a bunch of people with Crohn's disease obviously their digestive capacity increased dramatically when they got the parasites the parasites were not just living inside of their digestive system they were eating the food that the Crohn's disease person was eating and so they had to rely less on their extremely damaged digestive system they could start digesting stuff using microorganisms using helminthic digestion if you want to call it that and so their symptoms went away because now the food is passing through in a less harmful manner the greater your digestive health is the more energy you can put into digestion if you have Crohn's disease you can barely put any energy into digestion because the walls of your intestines are inflamed and generally speaking you're probably going to be nutrient depleted if you have Crohn's disease again if you have that much damage imagine how much vitamin A vitamin C collagen in general that you need to create to heal the digestive system and imagine how much vitamin A and collagen you need over your entire body so these people go from no digestive capacity to not having Crohn's disease at all how did that happen well you have to realize that one of the factors that play a big role here is that when you have Crohn's disease of course you need nutrients but the thing the entire system that is necessary for you to gain nutrients your digestive system without it you can't gain any nutrients really is damaged so if you eat a steak and a person with Crohn's disease eats a steak it's the same steak you're going to get far more nutrients than the person with Crohn's disease because you have a functioning digestive system so the things they eat are worth less so suddenly you introduce the parasites and now they're digesting food even better than you what do you think happens they're going to get enough nutrients to heal the digestive system now how about the children in Africa how about all of the people who are dying every day from parasite infections well, let me tell you something about poor people who they generally attribute parasitical infections to these people are living in extremely toxic environments they're completely malnourished they're probably dehydrated and they're not getting enough protein you have to realize that the way parasites interact with a healthy human is different than how parasites interact with an unhealthy human parasites that are in indigenous people that are helping them digest food that are in healthy people non-toxic healthy people in general they're going to behave differently because if you don't have a good mucosal membrane and you haven't met your protein requirements for several years you know you're a child in Africa you have a super toxic environment you're barely eating any protein you're just eating grains really and suddenly this parasite is introduced to your digestive system and it sits there and eats the food well first of all you're not getting enough food your mucosal membrane is garbage and the amount of dead cells you have in your digestive system is insane you're super unhealthy and so what do you think the parasite will do it will melt your intestines it can do that I won't deny that again you have to be really malnourished for this to happen so if I were you I wouldn't worry we're talking about a very malnourished like zero protein for a very long time grain only uh, skinny uh, children 
okay, with, with a messed up body in general. Those people are going to be susceptible to what I'm talking about. Speaking of parasite issues, how about brain parasites? Now, there are two things I'd like to say here. First of all, you know Toxoplasma gondii? The guy that's in almost all humans, or half the world at least. But that, again, that's a huge number of people that are also symptom-free. They call that a brain parasite. They say that that can get into your brain and mess you up. If they're calling Toxoplasma gondii a dangerous brain fluke, I mean, what should I say? Honestly, that speaks for itself. The second thing is, the man who popularized raw meat diets, or diets that include high-quality raw animal foods, is Ogenus Wonderplanets. And during the beginning of Ogenus Wonderplanets raw meat-eating journey, for the first few years, he thought he would get a brain fluke. He thought he was going to get a parasite that would eat up his brain, and he thought that he was going to die because of his raw meat diet. Everybody around him told him, that if you continue eating raw meat, you will eventually get a brain fluke and you will die. He believed this, but because raw meat was so good for his health, according to him, he continued eating it because nothing else had the same effect. Nothing else was giving him the results that he wanted. Then eventually he said, okay, I've been eating raw meat for years. Nothing is happening. I'm not getting any food poisoning. I'm not getting any bacteria, a parasite, fungus, whatever it might be. Nothing is killing me. So are they lying? So he went and investigated bacterial food poisoning, uh, brain flukes, all of these things that are associated with raw animal foods. And what he found is that, no, there's no connection between these sicknesses and high quality raw animal foods. Just like parasites might do things to an unhealthy human being that aren't very good, Parasites also have an easier time propagating in very unhealthy animals. So if you're eating very unhealthy animals, they might have some kind of parasite that eats animal tissue. I haven't heard of those, but an animal might have that. And if you then eat the animal and you get those eggs in you, sure, something might happen. But I'm talking about high quality raw animal foods. Honestly, the logic here isn't very hard. If you have a completely healthy animal, let's say with parasites, and it's completely healthy and you eat the animal, you won't get any problems because parasites are native to many, many mammals, maybe even all of them, but I can't say for sure. If the animal is dead and you open up its skull and you see that there are worms eating up its brain, then maybe you shouldn't eat that animal because maybe that animal isn't very healthy. You see the logic here? So if you're getting your animal foods, or especially meat and organs, from healthy animals, the brain flukes aren't going to be a problem. And then the claim that people are dying because of brain flukes, I don't know about that. I mean, look at raw milk. People say that it makes you sick. Yet you go to the Maasai tribe and the Fulani and the Samburu and they're drinking raw milk. They've been drinking raw milk for their entire existence and they haven't gotten any problems. Yet we say that there are raw milk outbreaks and we say that raw milk is dangerous where clearly it is not the raw factor of the milk that's dangerous. Otherwise, these raw milk drinking tribes, all these raw milk drinking cultures all across the world would be getting sick. But obviously they're not getting sick. So what I'm saying is that, is it really the parasites or is there some other factor here? If you like the way I teach health, go to my website. There's a free PDF called the 10 Dietary Rules. It gives you the 10 Dietary Rules that make nutrition easy. They're principles that any diet should follow, not a specific diet that's, you know, supposed to tailor to everyone. Read that PDF. It's super helpful if you're confused about nutrition. And if you really want to master health in the quickest way possible, read the six health commandments. It's also on my website, just a different link down in the description. It gives you health understanding very, very quickly. It goes straight to the point. With that said, go and achieve excellent health. I know you can do it.